Alicia in Houston, are you ready for the event? We are ready for the event. CBS Radio Network, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call the station for a voice check. How do you hear me? Have you loud and clear now? Well, Scott and Mikhail, good morning. It's Peter King with uh, Bill Harwood, CBS Network Radio, and uh, glad to be speaking with you this morning. You know, this is the second stay for each of you on board the International Space Station. Scott, in some of your pre-flight interviews, you spoke about hitting the wall after about four months the last time. You're more than two months in here, and for both of you, are you even close to hitting the wall right now? Well, uh, good afternoon, Peter and Bill. Great to talk to you guys. Um, I don't know if it was so much of a wall uh, as it was just kind of getting a sense that you've accomplished everything. You're, you know, you got a little bit of a fatigue level, and uh, you're looking forward to coming home. And that was, you know, the last time I was up here. You know, this time I have a little bit different perspective. I feel like I'm, uh, I've moved to the space station. I'm going to be here for a long time. I'm not sure when I'm coming home, although, you know, I do know it'll be sometime in March. And uh, But I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking about pacing myself, uh, you know, and having a good balance between uh, rest and work. And, Mikhail, same question. Uh, and have, uh, have you settled in, and are you uh, feeling the similar things that Scott is? Ну, я не, не могу сказать, что здесь санаторий. Well, I, I'm not saying it's a resort. It's a workplace. And all depends on how well you will manage to convince yourself that you have got to be there, you've got to be doing productive work. And we have convinced ourselves, both myself and Scott, that we know what we expect. And at this time, I don't even think about it. I know it's not going to happen too soon. And we will be expecting just working towards the end of the year. Thanks a lot. Uh, hey, Scott McHale, this is Bill Harwood at the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, we've been following the progress mishap and its impact on you guys, not so much from a supply standpoint, but how it's affected the schedule. Uh, Scott, I was wondering if you've gotten any updates about crew rotation. Are uh, Anton, Terry, and Samantha coming home next Thursday, or is that still up in the air? You know, I think they had a tentative uh, a date of next Thursday. I haven't heard of any uh, official announcement. Um, I think Roscosmos, uh, the Russian Space Agency, is going to come out with something here probably pretty soon, maybe maybe today. Um, and I think next Tuesday is when we're going to hear about the, uh, the future launches. I think they're planning to uh, announce some uh, launch dates, or I don't know if they'll be tentative or, or, or firm, but I think we're expecting to hear that next Tuesday. Well, you know, however it plays out, you guys are obviously going to be a bit short-handed there uh, longer than you originally planned until the next Soyuz flies. What impact, if any, will that have on research in general and on, on the one-year mission research in particular? Well, we do a, a lot of research on board the space station. There's a lot of work to do, uh, you know, not only the science but maintaining the uh, the facilities up here. So when you go down from a crew of six to a crew of three, obviously, you know, you've lost half of your crew time available. So it, it does have an impact, but it's an impact we, we plan for. And, uh, you know, as you know, we used to have a crew of three on board the space station and even at one time a crew of two people. So it's uh, something we can adjust to, and uh, we'll, we'll do the, just that. I think uh, the science that is related to Misha and I is a, a pretty high priority, but we just finished today uh, one of the first data takes of um, this fluid ships experiment, which is a, a pretty interesting and, uh, and, and important experiment where we were in this uh, lower, lower body negative pressure device in the Russian segment doing a bunch of scans, ultrasounds and stuff, 
um, and other scans on our eyes and the vessels in our, our heads. And uh, we don't have another one of those until August. So, uh, you know, I think we'll continue to do science on board, but uh, certainly at, at a reduced rate. Scott, it's Peter again, and you're getting ready to do some major modifications and uh, uh, moving around for the uh, new uh, commercial crew vehicles due up there in a couple of years. Reader's Digest version, what have you got coming up ahead in the coming weeks and months? Well, we, uh, we just actually finished moving the uh, PMM, which is a pressurized multipurpose module. It's what used to be called the MPLM, but it stays on board the station, space station. It's a big uh, closet storage uh, facility that is very important, actually. It really changed their operations up here from when I was here last time. Just having more volume to stow our hardware makes things a lot easier. But that was on the bottom of the space station, on the bottom of Node 1. And uh, we just moved it to the front of Node 3, so it's kind of in plane with the rest of the uh, space station. I kind of like it there. It's kind of like your, you know, closet or garage, so it's a little bit out of the way. Um, you know, I like it a little better that it's kind of in plane. You're not, you know, going out of plane when you get into it, although it is upside down, so you have to turn 180 degrees around. Um, so we did that, and that opens up a docking port on the bottom of Node 1, so we can have redundant docking ports for cargo vehicles, so we can have two docking ports for crewed vehicles, and hopefully in the next two years we're going we're gonna to use uh, those. But to have that docking part in Node 1, we're going to have to rewire the space station uh, to get it ready uh, to have a uh, docking port there. And we're also moving some of our... Uh, our equipment that's in the lab, the that'll be for a galley into Node 1, so there's a lot of work to be done in that area, too. So we are doing somewhat of a reconfiguration of the space station. We did, we got some of the work done already, but we still have a lot more to come uh, this summer. Yeah, Scott, this is Bill. You know, all that reconfig work and, uh, you know, the docking adapters you guys are going to install, I guess you're going to move PMA3 and all of that, plus all that internal wiring. That all assumes those spacecraft are going to come up there in 2017. You know, one of the things that struck me down here is Congress has never fully funded commercial crew, and it's looking like it might not get fully funded this year. Um, I realize that asking an astronaut in space about politics is always tricky, but what do you, what do you say to people about the commercial crew and the importance of getting those vehicles uh, up and running? Well, you know, it's really important to us. I think it's really important to our nation. Um, you know, we do the best with what we, what we have, and I'm not familiar with, uh, you know, the details of our budget, but, you know, I hope a uh, commercial crew gets funded at a at a, a level that we can work with and uh, keep to our schedule. But, again, I don't know the uh, details. As far as the work that needs to be conducted, I think we'll, we'll press ahead as if those vehicles will show up in uh, 2017 as scheduled. And, uh, you know, if they do get delayed, at least the uh, space station will be prepared for them. It's Peter again, and for both of you, you know, uh, you're up there for almost a year. You do the work day in and day out. You exercise hard every day, and you do the things to keep the space station running and getting uh, and, and get into a routine. What keeps this fresh and new every day for both of you? You know, I think anyone who's in the, you know, the same building or the same place for a really long period of time, um, you know, some parts of it become routine, but this is a really big space station. We do a lot of uh, varied, uh, various kinds of work here, uh, different kinds of science experiments. We have over 400 uh, different experiments going on at any one time in different areas from, uh, you know, basic kind of physics or basic science research to to medical technology that will uh, you know has and and hopefully will benefit more people on earth we've done a bunch of experiments with the with the rodents recently that that is in in kind of that discipline um, so the work uh, you know although you're in the same place the work doesn't really get routine uh, you know as an example this week we've done a lot of uh, human research like I said Misha and I in the Russian segment using some hardware that's never been used there before um, in this uh, lower pro body negative pressure device, and it's really a fascinating experiment. Experiment. This Sunday we're going to be doing the uh, working with the rodents again. Uh, Terry and Samantha just finished uh, changing out a uh, a fan pump separator on one of our spacesuits that needed uh, fixing. We have a lot of packing to do before the Soyuz goes home. 
recently got rid of SpaceX. Uh, so as you can see, you know, we have a lot of varied activity. So it really doesn't get routine. Um, and that's one of the great things about uh, being here and uh, working in this program. Scott, I wish we had more time, but we're told to wrap it up. Thank you both so much, and uh, safe mission. We look forward to speaking with you again. Yeah, our pleasure talking to you, Peter and Bill. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the CBS Radio Network portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from ABC News Digital. A couple of disturbances rolling right through the area and even off to the southeast. But first things first, let's begin off. Rolling right through, making an impact across northeastern or northwestern areas of, uh, of Missouri, even along that I-80. Hey there, this is ABC News Digital in New York. Can you hear me? And just south of Lincoln. Uh, Have you loud and clear? Hail as well, flooding a concern in Hall County in Nebraska. Uh, some areas are closed due to the flood. Okay, great. Stand by. That caused for a couple of accidents, unfortunately. Now, this theme will continue as we continue throughout the day, impacting Iowa all the way back into the fourth quarter. From New York. Say again. Hello. Hello, how do you hear me? Yes. Hello, Space Station, can you hear me? I have you loud and clear. Excellent, thank you. A piece of bad blood breaks Friday on ABC's 2020. What would you do if you saw this? You're a foster kid. Stop it. Well, what our is caught. You're a child. Take care of him. It will make you stand up and cheer. What would you do Friday at 9 on ABC? It's been three months into their glorious ride around planet Earth. Astronaut Scott Kelly and Russian cosmonaut Mikhail Kornienko selected to spend a year in space on board the International Space Station. The test, seeing how far the human body can go in such an extreme environment. Hello, I'm Ty Hernandez in New York. And now, joining us live from the ISS, astronaut Scott Kelly and cosmonaut Mikhail Kornienko. Good morning to you both. Scott, you were both selected as flight engineers for this expedition. We're going to start with you, though. How has it been living and working in space for the past three months? What's the biggest challenge? Well, I, you know, the biggest challenge is, uh, you know, being in the same place for, for such a long period of time and having a pretty uh, pretty heavy work schedule. But, you know, a lot of people do that. And, uh, you know, we get to work in this important program and, uh, you know, get to live in this uh, incredible environment with uh, microgravity and uh, the views of the Earth we have outside. So, uh, you know, it really is, is, is a privilege. Uh, I think we both feel privileged to be here and, and do this. Uh, the advantage with us is we had both been here before, so it's, uh, it's not new. And, uh, you know, it's something that, uh, that, w that we really enjoy, and we look forward to continuing uh, throughout the, next, uh, the rest of the year and next year. And, Mikhail, what are your expectations for your one-year mission? First off, I expect that we will come up with actual help which would go towards future generation, new astronauts and cosmonauts who will fly to Mars and to the Moon, and that's what we're trying to accomplish here. We are trying to better understand the uh, specifics, the nuances and subtleties uh, which we have progressed tremendously in. And we, these days, can very thoroughly examine the reaction of human body to a lengthy space flight. And that's the focus of our flight. This is not the only thing we're trying to accomplish, but that's the main thing. Scott, Mikhail just mentioned you are performing a lot of research on the mission, but you are also a living, breathing experiment to see how astronauts 
might fare on a long trip to Mars, say. Uh, is it true they're going to compare you with your twin brother when you return to Earth to see how the mission has affected you physically? Well, uh, like you said, there's a lot of research that goes on on board here, about 400 different experiments um, in all different kinds of disciplines. Some of them are related to exploration, and that's the one-year uh, science that Misha and I are doing. You know, how does the body adapt for longer periods of time, and, and what do we need to do to protect it so we can go further uh, from our home planet someday? Um, and the research with my brother is is a small part of that somewhat related and that's kind of in the in the genetic realm of how does this environment affect us on a genetic scale so uh, they're collecting data from my brother and samples uh, s certain types of scans cat scans on different parts of his body uh, they'll do the same on me after the flight and we do get samples up here as well so uh, you know that twin study is uh, one small part of a much larger science program we have here on the International Space Station. Mikhail, there are so many children who will be tomorrow's astronauts who become fascinated by what you do uh, by the small details. So what can you tell us about daily life in a microgravity environment? What is that like? Ну, в основном наша жизнь состоит из экспериментов. And we are working here for the benefit of the science. We start our day at 6 a.m. We wake up, uh, have some breakfast, and we run a daily planning conference. And after that, we start work and finish everything up by 6 p.m. And by all means, during the day, we're running physical exercises. This is almost a must. It's either a velo or treadmill or ARAD, which turned out to be outstanding device, which helps us out with a variety of different things that help us to stay fit. We perform hygienic procedures, and it's very similar to how we live uh, on the ground. It's a wake up in the morning, it's work, it's meals, and the only thing we're lacking is a swimming pool that we don't have this luxury up on the station. Uh, well, I hear it's like living in a swimming pool, so hopefully you don't miss it too much. Scott, I hear that you watched the movie Gravity while on the ISS. That actually, uh, I wonder if that's true. And also it made me think about what you do in your downtime. I mean, Mikhail just gave us a good sense of your daily schedule, but, I mean, did you bring your Kindle? What personally did you bring to make this, the downtime easier for you? Yeah, so we did watch the movie Gravity. We recently got a uh, projector, uh, HD projector up here, uh, not only for entertainment, um, but also from some work-related things. We could do uh, uh, video conferences on it. We can run some software. That's important to planning for spacewalks, for instance. But, uh, you know, I read. We have an iPad with uh, some software on it. You can read books. You... Uh, uh, we have uh, videos and movies we can watch on our laptops and, and on the iPads so or TV shows. We exercise. We have a phone. We can call people, call friends and family, uh, email. Uh, we actually have an uh, Internet connection, which is slow. It's kind of like dial-up, but it, is, uh, it does allow us to do some things. And, of course, you know, you look out the window a lot. The Earth is a very beautiful place, and uh, it's, uh, you know, we spend, spend time looking out the window and taking pictures. Well, I want to thank you both so much. Truly cool to speak to you guys while you're in the International Space Station. Scott Kelly, Mikhail Kornienko on board the ISS. Thank you so much for joining us. Our pleasure. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you.